God bless. Well, you know what? I got one announcement that I think I ought to make. That is, uh, next Sunday, we're inviting a, a fellowship from Bangor, a couple fellowships from Bangor, Maine, down, and they're going to come and join us. And everyone here is welcome also, but it's the same thing that we always do. Great uh, What? Great people. Great leaders, right. But what I meant is the thing we always do, everyone bring a dish. Me, Rosa and uh, I guess Betty are going to do the thing. I guess they don't like they don't like my uh, barbecue. That's what Rosa told me. No, no for because it's fall. I want to do a stew. Yeah, yeah. chili. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds lovely. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I didn't want you to think I was. <laughs> Just to go over a quick, I've got the fixing for a stew. Do you want to do a chili or? Yes. Uh, okay. And then anybody else wants to bring dishes, okay, like side that. dishes? That'd be great. That's always, always welcome. It's always worked well when every family brings a side dish, and there's plenty of food for everybody. It's yeah. always worked yeah. when that happens. So that's what we do. I always bring chips and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at you, and as the first thing I thought, we'll get. <laughs> Same with uh, Larry Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he, he comes, drinks, yeah. he always brings. Yeah. And uh, what day is our coffee? Is it oh, it's. Uh, I couldn't remember. It was the fifth or twenty ninth, and I think it's twenty ninth. I'll tell you. Because of Halloween, yeah. I think it's twenty ninth. Oh yeah, because we said. Yep. Yes, yeah, the twenty ninth. They're doing a. We're doing a coffee house at Nick and Betty's house on the twenty ninth. It's a Saturday. Okay. And. Uh, we didn't decide on a time. We haven't figured a time or anything. We, uh, Zach should be home. We're hoping that Zach will be home. Well, and he should be. Should be. He should be because he said about three weeks of, and that was, that was a while week while ago. ago. And, yeah. You know. Three weeks to change his mind. I don't think he's changed his mind. I don't think he is either. He might show up early. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets here, he'll be up right on time. That's right. <laughs> I think most of us were praying that he'd be here soon, so that's what we wanted, yep. you know, so it all worked out. I, I look at what we did, what happened with Zach as we let go and let God, mm -hmm. because we couldn't force him. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like it. <laughs> we didn't really want to let him go. Yeah. <laughs> we knew it, and deep down inside, he didn't really want to. Right, and he wouldn't. Like yeah. okay. I think we all knew that, but he had to find out. Yeah. And he felt like he had no options, so he just said. Yeah. So anyhow, that's, and what else do I got for announcements? Oh, uh, I just want to mention this so it goes out on the on the teaching on the, the video is this year my theme that I'm going to be working in God's Word is Jesus Christ. Now I've already said this to some of us, but I'm really going to work Jesus Christ. You know the, the 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 topic of this Bible is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is mentioned in every book in the Bible, starting in Genesis three fifteen. So there's no way that we can say that we know everything there is to know about Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, I think we're just skimming the surface. But I'm going to the my theme for this year is Jesus Christ. And with that, take your Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Steve, Yes, I am. Thanks for asking, though. <laughs> I've only done that once, but <laughs> I've probably done it twice. You guys know what we said, right? Yes. <laughs> I'll try. I'm not very good at that either. Hello. <laughs> I think it's all right to have input from everybody because that's just what I think. So we're in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to start in verse 20. And it says, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of death. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See, Adam was the one that brought a past condemnation and death to all mankind. But the other guy, Christ, made it so that we could be alive. What verse are you in? I'm in verse 23 now. 
says, by every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterwards they that are Christ that is coming, that would be us, then cometh the end, then he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God. See, at the end, he, he Jesus Christ, is going to deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Jesus Christ is going to do that. And then in verse 25 it says, For he must reign till he hath put all enemy under his feet. That's what Jesus Christ is going to do. It says, And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is accepted. He is talking about God. Jesus Christ is going to reign. Verse 25 says he must reign. He's the one that's going to reign until all enemies are put under his feet. And verse 27 says, For he hath put all things under his feet. For he, God, put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is accepted. God is accepted. God isn't under Jesus Christ's feet. But did put all things under him. And when all things should be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, God, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's pretty neat. God put all things right now in this administration under Jesus Christ's feet. And it says that in Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 20 it says for he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead to set to set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies far above all principality power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet. See, it says the same things. All things are under Jesus Christ's feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the body of believers, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is the Jesus Christ that I'm going to be working and studying. This is the one that I want to know. I've worked a lot about Jesus Christ in the Gospels, and that was wonderful. But I want to know about this Jesus Christ, who is reigning, who is the king. Reign means a kingship, the kingdom of God. And I want to learn what he's doing now what's going on now and how important that name Jesus Christ is to us it must be very important uh, there is an example of this in God's Word and we can see it in Genesis chapter 41 Genesis chapter 41 it's pretty neat how the Word of God has these examples for us to see and in verse 38, and this is talking about Joseph and Pharaoh. And I, I guess I'll say it right now. Uh, the God and Jesus Christ relationship are a lot like Joseph and Pharaoh's relationship. And see if it isn't, as, as I read the record here, starting in verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find a one, a one as this, a man of whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown these all the the all this that is done so discreet and wise as thou art. Can anyone find anyone as good as you are? 
Thou shalt be over my house, my kingdom, his house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. They're going to be ruled by the way Joseph wants it done, right? Only in the throne will I be greater than now. Is that quite a bit like the way God and Joseph, uh, God and Jesus Christ have got it set up, you know? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. You're in charge of all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and he put it upon Joseph's hand. And in the lands and times of the Bible, that ring was the signet ring. That's the ring that gave you the authority and power. He says, here you go, Joseph. You got all the authority and power. You got all the authority and power. And he put it up upon Joseph's hand, and he arrayed him in vesture of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck, you know. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him the ruler over all the land of Egypt. Joseph became the leader of all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Pretty wild. Right now in this day and time, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of the adversary, we don't see it very clearly because spirit's invisible. But it's there. We know what his mission is, kill, steal, and destroy. He's the one that brings everything that we don't like about. And there's another kingdom, the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, it's also called in the Bible the kingdom of heaven. But in that kingdom, Jesus Christ is the ruler. Jesus Christ is it. You know, except for one person who's that Jesus God. Okay. God. Thanks for paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I think that's where you Okay. All right. You guys are all confused now. Um, <laughs> take your Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. What I'm going to do through this year is I'm going to work in the the church epistles, the book of Acts, and I'm going to try to find out all I can about this Jesus Christ who is the head of the church and to figure out what he's doing and what's going on and how it, we can work with him. I was going to call this teaching at one point uh, Jesus Christ reporting to duty, sir, <laughs> because he is who we report to. He's the head of the kingdom, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 1, I want to read this. It says, Paul called to be an apostle of who? Jesus Christ. See, Paul was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Through the will of God and sexes our brother unto the church of God. Now he says here, the church of God. I know from God's word that there's Jew, Gentile, and church of God. A brand new classification called the church of God. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, and to them that are sanctified in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Here's another thing. In God's word, we are, God calls us saints. In the world, they call us Christians. But God, every time, calls us saints. The word saint means set apart. We're called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let me show you, and I'll read the rest of the verse. Our Lord, both theirs and ours. Jesus Christ is our Lord. In these first two verses, Jesus Christ is mentioned one, two, three times. Two verses, Jesus Christ is used three times. In the first ten 
verses of Corinthians, Jesus Christ is going to be named 11 times. How wonderful is the name of Jesus Christ? Verse 3 says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from this guy that we're studying about, you know, from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I think the name of Jesus Christ is a name worth spending some time to learn and grow on. Especially right now because he's the head of the church. That's a good reason. He's our boss. We call him Lord in today's society. We say we call him our boss. Right? Who's your boss? Jesus Christ. You know? Verse 5 says, In everything we are enriched by him. Now it doesn't call him Jesus Christ here, but that's who it's talking about. Jesus Christ. That's I used to say his name was written in here uh, 10 times when I taught this, but I'm saying 11 times now. You can fight with me if you want. It says, in all utterance and in all knowledge. See, we're to know. We're to know. Uh, verse 6 says, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. When we believed it, it was confirmed in us. How was it confirmed in us? Well, we were able to manifest Holy Spirit, right? So that ye become the, uh, come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're, Jesus Christ is everything to us. He's the one that made our lives available, and he's the one we're waiting for. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? He's going to confirm us unto the end that we may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we could study, what's this day of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, it could be right now. He's the king. He's the, the one that reigns and we reigns in life. He's our Lord, right? Or it could be the day in which he returns or the day that it ends, but it's Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. We were called into that fellowship. Pretty neat. His son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Once again, it lets us know that he's our boss. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again. That... Ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment or the same opinion. Pretty neat. In the first ten verses, Jesus Christ is named eleven times. That ought to speak volumes to us. It really ought to mean a lot to us. Uh, I'm going to continue reading. This. I'm going to read this whole chapter. It says, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them that are of the household of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, every one of you said, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, I am of Cephas, that's Peter, I am of Christ. See, people were saying, well, this is who I'm following. They're going to follow either Paul or Apollos or Cephas. And there's a few of them there that says, I am a Christ or a follower in Christ. I'm going to say to all of you, there's only one that you have to follow and you should follow, and that is Jesus Christ. What organization do I belong? Well, I belong to the organization where Jesus Christ is the head of the church. That's the one I belong to. Uh, verse 13 says, Is Christ divided? I don't think so. <laughs> Was Paul crucified for you? Nope. He didn't do that. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Genghis. Oh yeah, I did these guys. You know, there's a record in God's word where it's Peter that is talking about 
where they where we went to Cornelius' house and he got them born again. They were speaking in tongues and prophesying, and they said, "Well, can we get prop, can we get baptized?" And Peter says, oh, yeah, "I guess so. You're born again." But he, they didn't really have to, but he did it because they asked him. You know what I mean? Maybe that's what happened with Paul. But one thing Paul says, I, I, don't, I didn't baptize anybody but these two. Then it goes on to say, least any should say that I baptized in my own name. Paul's name wasn't that important. It was the name of Jesus Christ that was important. He says, oh, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides this, I know not whether I baptized any other. Verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of the words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. In this one verse, the word Christ is used twice. But he says he was sent not to baptize, but to preach. And I love this section, and that's why I'm reading it. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. They're perishing because they have no eternal life. He says, when they hear the words of preaching, they're foolishness unto them, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It's where we can Pray for one another and see signs, miracles, and wonders. Verse 19 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The understanding of the prudent. What that means is the understanding, I mean, the intelligence of intelligence will be brought to nothing. Now then, by their smartness, it will actually help out nothing. One thing that I see in the world today, in the world that we live in, when they see evil, when they see injustices and, you know, that type of thing, what they say is the reason that we have it is because we're not smart enough. We're not educated enough. We don't have enough wisdom. You know, but... As they're saying it, they're letting you know they do. You know, we just need to have this wisdom. We could just teach the world how to get along, and they could do it. But you know what they don't see? The invisible world. They don't see the evil. They don't see the adversary. But we do. So by their wisdom, they're getting nowhere fast because they just don't see it. Verse 20, where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the, the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolish, the foolish, the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. By their five senses, by their thinking, there is no God. We can save ourselves. That's their wisdom. The wisdom is if we just get smart enough and we can teach, we're just not good at teaching. That's how they think. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're going to come out with their songs that will help you to understand that you're not knowing enough, that you don't have enough love and care. That if everyone did, then everyone could just love one another. But that's not true. We know that the thief cometh forth to steal, kill, and destroy. They don't know that wisdom. They don't believe that wisdom. That wisdom comes from God. Okay, verse 21. It says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The world thinks that if you went out and got a soapbox and preached for God, that that would be foolish. You would be foolish. They would call you uh, foolish. They would think you're foolish. You know, when Betty's out trying to, you know, speak the word, the world, I'm not saying that guy, but the world would think, oh, that's foolish. That's foolish. Um, the other day, I, went, I saw a person that I see all the time, and I and he goes, who are you? 
And I go, Steve, Steve James, don't you know me? And he goes, oh yeah, the preacher. And you know what I said? Yes, I am. I don't mind being called the preacher. I've never used that title about myself, but when he said that, that's exactly what I went. That's right. That's who I am. I'm the preacher. And he gets this from the bumper, the signs on my van. It's the only way he could get it. Uh, verse 23 says, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block. Unto the Greeks foolishness. It doesn't make sense to them. Foolishness. You know, it's not wisdom. But unto them that are called both Jew and Greek. Remember I was saying that the, 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 there was Jew, Gentile, Church of God. Well, under, out of the Jew and the Gentile, right, there's this new group called the Church of God. And that's what we belong to. If there is an organization that we belong to, it's the Church of God, where Jesus Christ is the head. But it says here, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And isn't that so? For ye see your calling, brethren, how not many... Wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen, yea, the things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh or nothing you can do with our flesh, or, you know what I mean, means our five senses is that great. That's why God has given us the manifestations, that manifestation of speaking in tongues is, is something we do that bypasses our mind, that glorifies God. It, like we looked at on Thursday, it's the true worship. It's the true worship, you know. Verse 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. God, for, okay, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption is just made unto us when we believe in jesus christ we just get this it's like wisdom we get the wisdom we get the righteousness we get the sanctification we get the redemption these are called sonship rights that we get that according as it is written he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. We glory in the Lord, and that is our battle cry. When people want to glorify us or glorify something we did or something, we just say, well, praise God. God's the one that deserves the glory. Because where would we be without God? Where would we be without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And like I was saying, I'm going to be looking at all these records in the church epistle to find out more about Jesus Christ. He's our boss. You know, and I'm looking at it like, okay, what's, what do you want me to do now? What's my next order? I know you're the boss. What's the order? I bet that's all in here. I bet there's so much to learn that we haven't got into yet, but we're going to. So it'll be fun as we do that. So, that's all I'm going to share about that today. As, as the weeks go by, I'm hoping to share more and more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because that's my personal theme of study for this year, is Jesus Christ. And the Jesus Christ in the church epistles and that you can read in the book of Acts. The one that's the head of the church. Okay? Well, dear God, we're so blessed and thankful 
to live in a day and time when Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, when we can take our orders from Him, God. So, God, I thank you for the things that we can learn as we continue to work your word and that we can have wonderful lives waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior. Amen.